Okay, welcome back to acids and bases again. Uh, we just finished up learning how to write neutralization reactions, both molecular, ionic, and net ionic. We learned about strong acids and strong bases and how strongs dissociate and weaks stick together. So now we're going to quantify this. We're going to do some quantitative neutralization, which is going to be a little bit of stoichiometry, which we've done quite a bit of this year. Now in stoichiometry, you'll remember, I hope, that there are four steps. Number one, you balance the equation. So oftentimes you might have to write the equation first, but then we'll balance it. Then we have to get into moles. Now for this particular chapter, it's usually going to be molarity times volume. If you remember, uh, molarity times volume is equal to moles. Let me just show you why in case you've forgotten. Molarity has the units of moles per liter. And if I multiply that by the volume in liters, you'll notice that liters cancel out. And that leaves us with moles. Okay, so one way to get into moles is multiplying molarity times the volume in liter, liters. Another, th another way we can do that, which is the first thing we learned how to do uh, to get into moles way back in September, was going from grams and dividing by the molecular weight and getting into moles. So that's another way we might have to get into moles. But for the most part, we'll be using molarity times volume, and that will get us into moles of our uh, initial substance. Okay. After that, we're going to get into moles of what we're after. And for this, we are going to use the coefficients from the balanced equation. Okay, so we'll look up the coefficients from the balanced equation. That will help us get from moles of what we know to moles of what we're after. And then finally, we're going to get into the appropriate unit, the unit of what we're after. Now that will either be grams, uh, liters, or molarity. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. It's probably the best way to, to review this is just jump right into it and we'll... Uh, We'll see how it goes from there. Now this is going to sound a lot like uh, Charlie Brown's teacher talking to him, if you remember, as I read this question. It's going to be a bunch of blah, 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 blah. And you won't understand a thing, but we'll pull things out slowly, and hopefully you'll be able to see what's happening. I'm going to put a big star by this, because this calculation and this process we're going to do in our lab next week. So you have to understand this. Well, I'll give you plenty of opportunity through homework and other classwork problems to, to review this, but this is, this is one of the important ones. We will be doing this during our lab next week. So here we go. What would be the molarity of a potassium hydroxide solution if 15.6 mils is neutralized by 41.6 mils of 0.1 molar nitric acid? Blah, 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 right? Okay, let's just do it step by step. Step one, if you, as you recall, is to balance the equation, but I don't give you an equation here. We have to write it ourselves. That's okay. We just learned how to do that. We have potassium hydroxide and nitric acid. Now, we are going to use our molecular equation here, not the ionic or net ionic. It's easiest to use the molecular. These are all double replacement, remember. So K and NO3 will get together. Potassium's positive one, nitrate's negative one. So just one of each will do. And of course we make water. So here's my balanced equation. I don't have to do anything to it. It's one to one to one to one. Okay, step one is finished. Step two, get into moles. Now remember, to get into moles, we're usually going to do molarity times volume. But we can check. If there's grams, we can go from grams to moles, which we're pretty used to doing. But let's see, I don't see any uh, I don't see any grams there. So we're gonna have to do molarity and volume. So which do I know the molarity and volume of? What would be the molar oh, I don't know the molarity of my potassium hydroxide solution. If I did it would be a dumb question, because I'm asking for it. But I do know the volume and molarity of my nitric acid solution. So that's what I'm gonna start with. I'm going to use that in liters. So 41.6 mils is 0 0.0416 liters. Okay, we'll multiply that by the molarity. 0 
moles of HNO3 per liter. So you see liters divide out and we have moles of nitric acid. Step two is done. And remember, I did that by multiplying the volume times the molarity. Okay, step three. We're going to go from moles of what we know, okay, into moles of what we're after. So let's see, we're after potassium hydroxide. So we're going to get into moles of KOH. And we get these, uh, this conversion factor by using our balanced equation. It's one to one. So moles of HNO3 are gone, and I'm in moles of potassium hydroxide. My last step is to get into the moles of, or get into the appropriate unit. And I'm after molarity here. Now molarity has the unit moles per liter. I have moles, I just need to get the liter part of it. So how many liters of potassium hydroxide do I have? Let's see. 15.6 mils. Isn't that 0 0.0156 liters? It is. So I'll have moles per liter, which is molarity. So let's pull out a cheap calculator, see if we can do this. We have... 0 0.0416 times 0.1 uh, divided by 0 0.0156. Enter. Looks like I'm only allowed three significant figures here, so we're going to go with 0.267. So the molarity of my potassium hydroxide is 0.267 moles per liter. Okay, you might want to rewind this and go through that a couple of times because, like I said, this is important. You'll be doing that for homework. It's actually the first part of assignment 58 a couple of times. So once again, if you didn't see how I did that, stop and go back and do it, do it over again. There's also an example in your book. Now let's do example 13. Um, what volume of 0 0.050 molar sulfuric acid is necessary to neutralize 25 mils of 0 0.026 molar sodium hydroxide? Step one, let's write and balance the equation. H2SO4 and NaOH. Double replacement. So sodium and sulfate get together. It is not NaSO4. Stop doing that. Sodium is positive 1. Sulfate is negative 2. So it's Na2SO4. And H and OH, we get our friend water once again. We'll put a 2 here and a 2 here to balance that. Step 1 is finished. Now, we need to get into moles. So, I don't know grams of anything here, but I do know molarity and volume of sodium hydroxide. So we'll take the volume, 0 0.0250, we'll put it in liters, and then we're going to go from liters to moles of sodium hydroxide. My molarity is 0 0.026 moles per liter. Right, 0 0.026 moles per liter, right there. So once again, this was volume times molarity, and you can see that that gives us moles. Now, step three, we want to go from moles of what we know to moles of what we're after. So we're after sulfuric acid. Now that ratio is not one to one this time. There's a 2 in front of sodium hydroxide and a 1 for sulfuric acid. Okay, so step 3 is done. And finally, step 4, we're going to get into our desired unit. This time I want to know the volume of sulfuric acid. So I want to hop out of moles, obviously, of H2SO4, and I want to get into liters. What can I use as a conversion factor that helps me go from moles to liters? That's right, the molarity. The molarity is 0 0.050 moles per liter. So I'm using that as a conversion factor to help me go from moles to a unit of volume. So when I'm all done, I'll have my answer in liters here. So let's pull out our cheap calculator again and we'll try this. 0 0.0250 times 0 0.026 divided by 2 divided by 0 
and I end up with, uh, looks like I'm only allowed two sig figs here. So 0 0.0063 liters, which is the same as 6.3 milliliters. I would gladly take either answer. Okay. Let's continue with this. Let's do example 14. Some more quantitative neutralization. This time I want to know grams of calcium hydroxide needed to neutralize 72.6 mils of 0.2 molar hydrofluoric acid. So we have Ca, OH2, and HF, double replacement, calcium and fluorine get together. It is not CAF. It's not it. Calcium's 2 plus. Fluoride's 1 negative. So it's CAF2. And of course, our friend water. So to balance this, let's see. I need two fluorides there. That gives me four hydrogens, so I need a two in front of my water. Okay, step one is done. Now let's get into moles. I don't know grams of anything, but I do know the molarity and volume again. So we'll start with 0 0.0726 liters. And we're going to go from liters to moles of HF. So multiply volume times molarity, 0 0.20 moles per liter. So once again, that's volume times molarity. And you can see we have moles left over. Then we're going to go from moles of what we know to moles of what we're after, which if you read the problem, is calcium hydroxide this time. It's a 2 to 1 ratio. And then we want to get into our desired unit. So we have to go from moles of calcium hydroxide to grams. So we have to calculate the molecular weight of calcium hydroxide here. That's really old school. So let's do that. Calcium is 40.1. Uh, we have two oxygens. They're each 16.00, so that's 32. And two hydrogens, which is 2.01 uh, for the both of them. So we end up with 74.11 grams per mole. So, now we can do our math and we'll have our answer in grams of calcium hydroxide. So let's see what we got here. 0 0.0726 times 0.2 divided by 2 times 74.11 grams per mole. Uh, two sig figs again, and limited here. So it's 0.54 grams of calcium hydroxide would be needed to neutralize that acid. Okay? Alright, the last one. This is another important example. This is uh, the second part of the lab we're going to do next week. And I don't think I have time to complete this on this video, but we'll forge ahead. We'll see how far we can get until uh, we're at about 15 minutes or so. So this time I want to know the molecular weight of a monoprotic acid. If 0.5 grams is neutralized, there's our volume and molarity again of 37 mils of 0.2 molar sodium hydroxide. Now I made up an equation. Since I don't know what the acid is, but I do know it has one proton, I called it HX. And NaOH, double replacement, will make NaX and our friend water. Now remember, to find molecular weight, we need to know two things, grams and moles. Do you remember which one's always given to us? That's right, grams. We have 0.5 grams of the acid. So we just need to find moles. Grams divided by moles will give us our molecular weight. So that shouldn't be too hard. So we have molarity and volume. We have 0 0.0370 liters. And it's 0 0.200 moles of NaOH per liter. So once again, volume times molarity for the fourth time in a row is moles. Then we'll go from moles of NaOH to moles of our unknown acid. And notice it's one to one. Guess what? I'm done. I know moles of HX, and I'm going to put that right there. So let's see if we can get this done. We have 0 0.0370 times 0.2 equals 0 0.0074 moles. 
Um, I guess we're supposed to have three stick picks there. Sorry. So I'll put that here. And now we can find our molecular weight, which is our grams divided by moles. 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.00740. Looks like it's 67.6 .6 grams per mole. That was pretty fast, wasn't it? Okay, and I put a star by that because that's the second part of our lab next week. After we find the molarity of a base, we will use that to find the molecular weight of an unknown acid, and we'll use this process. Alrighty, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks. Bye-bye.